Okay, so this is something of interest, and I think we need to talk about it because uh, Disney is selling off Fox Next Studios, the creator of Marvel Strike Force. And this is a Bloomberg article that came out about an hour ago, and we're going to read it in its entirety. But uh, what happened was is that uh, Disney has been on this buying purchase. You know, they bought up Lucas, they bought up uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they also bought uh, Fox Studios, which is going to be like X Men and Deadpool and things like that, and a lot of other things. But one of the small pieces of Fox Studios was Fox Next, the developers of Marvel Strike Force. And we've talked about it on this channel for a while now that Disney does not want to be in the business of developing cell phone games or any game whatsoever. They want to do licensing. Uh, kind of like what they do right now with EA and the Star Wars franchise. They just license it out. They don't want to be developing games. And they actually shut down their whole video game division quite abruptly. A lot of people are upset, like that Infinity. Uh, there was also, they had uh, a Star Wars Commander cell phone game. They also had like Star Wars Rival, which was a game in soft launch development. They got purged and just ended. And I think that got moved over to a different studio, Zynga. I don't know how to say that name, actually. So what does this mean for the game? And, I, and I'm just going to say this right now. I think it means nothing, nothing whatsoever to the game. I think the game is going to continue on. Now, I do think that whoever or whomever buys uh, the studio, I don't know the proper use of whom or whomever, put it down in the comment section because I can't figure that out for the life of me. Uh, my entire life, I can't figure out when to use whomever correctly. Uh, but I think it does matter for the people that work there and maybe the long-term direction of the game. But in the near term, nothing, nothing is going to change. I mean, these things take forever and uh, the studio will probably remain independent anyways and just be a subdivision and retain their offices. But it could make a difference in the way the direction of the game maybe a year from now or further. But the game is profitable and it's going forward. So we're going to read this article and then we're going to talk about two different companies that could possibly... Uh, buy out uh, Fox Next and Marvel Strike Force. I'm also going to talk about my trip over to their studio, which is the next couple days. And I might have more clarification on this topic uh, after visiting their studio. I'm going to be at Fox Next headquarters on Thursday and Friday of this week. And I'm looking forward to that. So Marvel Strike Force brought in $150 million in the first year. And that does sound like a lot of money, but I just want to say that is a goodish amount of money. Uh, it means that the game is successful and is going to be around a long time, but it is not a mega blockbuster. It's, it's goodish. Uh, you know, probably one out of 20 games is, uh, makes it and makes money and moves forward. And Marvel Strike Force is definitely one of those games. Uh, but it's like those one of those 100 games, uh, where they just knock it out of the park. We're talking about like the Clash of Clans and uh, Contest of Champions and Summoner's Wars. Uh, those games are just huge billion dollar games. Uh, people don't know this, but Summoner's War has made $1.3 billion in revenue. Summoner's War. I mean, pretty much uh, this game right here, uh, Marvel Strike Force and Galaxy of Heroes, the Hero Collector games kind of modeled loosely after Summoner's War. $1.3 billion. It's big business. So uh, $150 million in the first year is a good number. I think that would have been way more impressive if it was closer to $250 million. CEO Bob Iger wants to focus on licensing characters to others. Yes, they've said this many times. Walt Disney Company plans to sell Fox Next, the video game business acquired with the purchase of 21st Century Fox Entertainment Assets earlier this year, according to people familiar with the matter. Business, founded two years ago, makes free-to-play mobile titles based on entertainment properties such as the hit... Marvel Strike Force, which took in more than $150 million in, la in the first year. Fox Next also has games in the work based on Avatar and Aliens. And I said this in my other video the other day, is I'm heading out to Fox Next Studio Thursday and Friday this week, and there's two purposes going out there. I'm, I'm planning on seeing a lot of really cool things from Marvel Strike Force. Hopefully I'll be able to make videos as soon as I can share the information on whatever we're going to see. But I'm excited about it. I've, I've seen a little glimmer of it. It looks amazing. But the other purpose is that we're also going to look at a undisclosed, unnamed title from Fox Next. And I got to tell you, I'd be pretty excited if it was either Avatar or Aliens. And like I said, as soon as I can uh, let people know, I will. Free-to-play titles, which make money by convincing players to buy things in the game. 
<laughs> I know about that. I've spent lots of money on this game. My goodness. And I'm by no means a whale, but I've spent some money on this. My God. Are among the fastest growing areas of the video game industry, Zynga and closely held Jam City Inc., two players in the genre, are among the companies that have been acquiring design studios, entertainment licenses. And I have been to uh, Zynga. Zynga? How do you say it? I've been to their headquarters, too, uh, back in the U.K., uh, they're pretty cool people over there. I don't know anything about Jam City. I'm sure someone in the comments section will let me know. Senior Disney executives, including the direct-to-consumer chief Kevin Mayer, just kept keeping the company with CEO Bob Iger, concluded he no longer wants to be in the business of making video games. Wow, that is not a new position. They've been doing... Uh, uh, we talked about this. I don't know when we talked about this. Last fall? This, we said uh, they're gonna they're gonna dump this game. And back in that video from like a, a year ago, almost uh, the idea was more about uh, will it get sold off or will the company go independent? And it does not look like they're gonna go independent. Uh, like if they had enough cash to pay them the cash out uh, and just pay off uh, Disney and be removed separate. No, they're gonna get sold off uh, to whoever's interested. And this article mentions two names here. I think it possibly could be EA or Activision. Um, it could be either one, but uh, Activision actually kind of makes sense to me. And actually, uh, both EA and Activision have offices like within like a quarter mile of Fox Next. They're all down there in Plata del Rey. Uh, some people call it Silicon Beach. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube headquarters down there or YouTube spaces right there. There's a lot of stuff down there. Disney like many entertainment giants, has a checkered history in video games. Yeah, no kidding. That's an understatement right there. 2016, the company shut down its Infinity line of toys and games of many of its game studios. Clump Penguin, a once popular game, was also shuttered. And uh, when I think about cell phone games, there's a Star Wars Commander, and then there was a game in soft launch called Star Wars Rival, and they were both being developed by directly themselves. Uh, Star Wars Rivals got completely axed, and Star Wars Commander got sold off to Zynga. And maybe the Star Wars Rivals did too, but uh, that game is gone, long gone. And that's not Force Arena. Force Arena is a different game. I'm talking about Star Wars Rival. This was more like a shooter game, kind of like the Lego shooter type games. It's like kind of on rails. It's kind of a strange game. I made some videos about it. Doesn't matter. Since then, Disney has largely been licensing characters and brands to game makers such as Electronic Arts, which is releasing Star Wars title in November. That's correct. Iger reiterated this strategy in February conference call. So Disney has acquired a lot of intellectual property, the Lucas, Marvel Cinematic uh, Universe, and now all of Fox Studios IPs, which would be like Avatar, Aliens, maybe Simpsons, but most importantly, Deadpool, uh, X-Men, and so on. And they want to license it out, let somebody else make the game rather than making them uh, themselves. So what they would do is they would uh, get rid of Fox Next uh, Studios and Fox Next Studios would get sold off to somebody else. And Disney would still collect the royalties from the intellectual property. They would like, uh, just like they are getting the, some of the revenue from like Star Wars, Galaxy of Heroes, and like that. So what does that mean to us? Probably that nothing is going to change, but it may change things for who takes it, especially EA. And I have some thoughts about what this will mean if EA acquires Fox Next. And then Fox Next is one of several odds and ends Disney picked up as a result of the 71 billion Fox deal. Uh, they include investments in the Dutch soccer lead, I don't know how to say that, and Moby Group, which bills itself as Afghanistan's largest media company. Uh, Disney recently completed the sale, ordered by federal writers of Fox Regional Sports Networks. Company also inherited a piece of sports betting site DraftKings, even though Iger says he doesn't want to be in the business of gambling. So... Uh, let's talk about Activision and possibly EA and what this means to you, the player. Pretty much think that this means nothing to me as a player. Nothing. Now, if EA buys out Fox Next, um, I think that could be bad for some of the employees that work there because uh, the feeling I've got from uh, EA and Fox Next is that there's bad blood and it's a small industry and there's a lot of bad blood there. That's just the feeling I always got. Uh, you know, and it, just the similarity of Galaxy of Heroes to Fox Next is just like uncanny, like, especially when the game first came out. It seems like the game has changed quite a bit and specifically Marvel Strike Force has actually moved quite ahead. 
in a lot of ways in uh, the gameplay and the different game modes. And it's definitely become its own entity. But initially, it seemed like it was like a near uh, exact clone of uh, Galaxy of Heroes. So I don't know if there's bad blood or not. Uh, it does seem like there's bad blood. And I think that might be bad for some of the employees that used to work for EA. Just saying. Uh, then the other thought there is Activision. And the reason why I'm thinking Activision is Activision is kind of wanting to get into the mobile space, uh, like with Blizzard, and they, they're coming out with that Diablo uh, mobile title, mobile game. And it just kind of makes you wonder if maybe this is something you want to get into because uh, without a doubt, cell phone games are becoming huge. We talked about Summoner's War. That's $1.3 billion in revenue. Cell phone games are huge right now. And uh, you got a company like Activision, which is trying to get into this space. And uh, EA's been trying to get into this space too. And they've had mixed results. I mean, I think EA's had uh, good luck with um, Madden and Galaxy of Heroes. And they've got their, they've got a Sims game and Plants vs. Zombies, my understanding. But uh, their, that Command and Conquer Rivals, my understanding, didn't do well. And I uh, used to be a stockbroker, so sometimes I look at their stock reports. And uh, EA is kind of in a weird place right now. I don't know if they're growing and expanding and buying companies. And you know, they've had some... Uh, some games not do well. Uh, Anthem has had mixed results. Battlefront 2 was mixed results. Battlefield uh, 5, mixed results. And, you know, that Command & Conquer Drive is mixed results. And it, it seems like some of their other uh, mobile titles have been going down, and they were kind of wanting something to fill that gap. It was supposed to be Command & Conquer Rivals. Uh, that didn't really happen. So maybe they'll buy. But Activision makes a lot of sense. And uh, this article suggests these two here. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters. I don't think it's going to change anything uh, as far as this game. And even if uh, they're sold tomorrow, this thing will take like a year uh, to sort out. And because the game is is successful, it's not going to change anything. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, these are just the thoughts off the top of my head. I'm by no means an expert on this. And uh, I will let you know as soon as I have information more on this topic, or more importantly, information on new stuff that's coming to the game, because that's the stuff people really want to hear about, uh, and maybe this new title. You know, like I said, I'm going to be out there on Thursday, and we'll let you know. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.